Hello and welcome to this video to help you prepare for your ISA. This is all about risk assessment and I'm afraid this video is all doom and gloom. So the risk assessment is part of the very long uh, nine mark question in section one and this is how I like my students to set it out. If your teacher has told you a different way to set it out, um, that's the way you should set it out. So I like a table which has a column for risk, hazard and control. Basically this is what can hurt you, how it can hurt you, and how you can stop it hurting you. So let's look at some physics examples first. So what can hurt you are the, the weights. You could uh, drop them on your toes. That wouldn't be very good. And you can control this by making sure that they are um, secure, securely tied to the end of whatever um, you stuck them onto, so the end of your string or the end of your spring or whatever it is. So for everything, I want to know what can hurt you, how it could hurt you, and how you're going to stop it hurting. So here are some more physics examples. Let's start up here with our spring. Um, so the thing that could hurt you is a spring. How it could hurt you, um, there are a couple of ways it could hurt you. It could break in the middle and then it could um, spring up into your face and it could potentially blind you. Um, you could um, drop what was ever on the end of it. Um, so the control would be to make sure that you don't overload the spring. A spring that's overloaded is much more dangerous, much more likely to break. Um, here we have some string. Uh, string could, you know, if you're being really, really silly with string, which I know none of you are, you could potentially strangle somebody with it, you could trip somebody over with it, they could fall and seriously hurt themselves. Um, and the way that you control for that is just being really sensible. Make sure you don't have a bit of string that's too long and uh, make sure you don't, uh, make sure you're aware of your surroundings and you're not waving the string around over your head. You could have a ray box which is connected to electricity. So whenever you're using electricity, you need to be careful not to poke anything in the plugs. Make sure there's no water around. With the ray box, we've got light coming out of it. So make sure you don't um, wave the light in anybody's eyes. That could be very dangerous. Uh, make sure you don't take the ray box apart because you might electrocute yourself. Um, we have a mirror here, the mirror could break, this could cut you, so make sure that you're sensible with the mirror, make sure you don't wave it around, make sure you don't hit it or anything, make sure you just keep it on the bench and a nice um, steady secure block, make sure you've got it, you know, um, it might be held together with, I have wooden blocks that I hold my mirrors with in my lab. Here is a wooden ramp. This is generally a large piece of wood. You could, when moving this around the lab, lab potentially hit somebody in the head with it. So just be very aware of your surroundings um, when you're moving this. Um, here is a bung. I sometimes use these to demonstrate um, bungee jumpers or to demonstrate centripetal force. So when you're, and when the bung is bouncing or when the bung is swinging around, this could hit somebody, this could hurt them. Make sure that um, you're aware of your surroundings. Make sure that nobody is standing close to you when you're doing experiments. Uh, this is a Newton meter. You're going to have things hanging off the end here. Again, this could break. You could drop it. Whatever's on the end could fall off and hurt people. Make sure you don't overload it. Make sure you're aware of your surroundings. And even though this is all about physics, I still want to see everybody wearing goggles. I have been in a year 12 lab where a spring has broken, gone up and hit somebody on the goggles. Fortunately, it wasn't in that eye because that would have been a very, very serious injury. So in chemistry, there are again lots of things that can hurt you. This uh, this um, video is all doom and gloom, I'm afraid. So we have your Bunsen burner. You could burn yourself with a Bunsen burner. So you want to make sure that when you... Um, first turn it on, you turn it on with a safety flame, that you have it sitting well away from you, that your ties are tucked in, that your hair is tied back, that you have goggles on, that you have a heat proof mat under it. We use quite a lot of glass in chemistry, um, it could break, it could hurt you, you could cut yourself. So if anything breaks, you need to tell your teacher, you need to be very sensible, you need to be aware of your surroundings. If you're putting glass on a tripod, make sure it's sort of secure base and it's not going to fall off. 
um, acid or alkali are things that we're also used a lot and this applies to any chemicals really. Check the hazard symbols. If something says it's flammable, write that in your risk assessment. If something says it's corrosive, write that in your risk assessment. Um, chemicals are very dangerous. You could spill them. If you put your hands on them, you could put them up to your eyes. So wear goggles to protect your eyes. If you put your hands in them, wash your hands straight away. Um, tell your teacher as well because some chemicals have special conditions that you don't need to be aware of. But your teacher will know that if you spill certain things, they have to take these precautions and they have to clear them up in certain ways. And for pets, I say for pets here because I've seen an example of this, but this also goes for stirring rods or glass rods. I was once, uh, when I was training to be a teacher, in a lab with a very experienced teacher and she was running a practical with a group of year sevens. Um, a year seven walked around holding the pet like this at ear level, stuck it in his friend's ear and he went deaf. So I always tell people that whenever they have pets in my lab, I want to see them pointing downwards at an angle like this. There is absolutely no reason for you to be walking around the lab holding the pet at this angle. Absolutely no reason for you to walk around the lab holding uh, the pet at anybody's head height. And so lastly, biology. I put biology last because I've never run a biology practical before and I don't see myself running biology um, ISA anywhere in the future. But from talking to colleagues, I understand that some biology practicals are run outside. So you have the risk of um, sun. You also have the risk of um, little rain droplets. So if you're going outside in the sun, you need to be aware that you're probably going to need to have sun cream, that you're going to need to wear a hat because you get the sunburn. If it's raining or windy or snowy, um, you could slip over, you could hurt yourself, you could ruin your hair, which would in my case be a rather disastrous occurrence um so be aware of the weather that you may have to change the day the practical if um that doesn't happen if, if it rains sorry um plants stuff like stinging nettles might hurt you so if you're going around counts uh, measuring the size of leaves make sure you know what plants you're touching um some of them can cause allergic reactions some like stinging nettles could hurt you also be aware of any insects or creatures Bees, wasps can sting, um, but other insects can also cause allergic reactions. Um, water is dangerous if you're going anywhere near a pond, you could trip, you could fall into it. This could, in worst case scenario, lead to drowning. So make sure somebody always knows where you are, make sure you're in a pair, um, make sure people know what to do if something does happen, go and get a teacher, um, and make sure you stay within sight of everyone else in the group and exercise and um, running up and down the stairs if you're measuring heart rate you could trip you could fall you need to be aware of people that may be vulnerable because of medical conditions such as asthma or they may have sprained that ankle or something like that um, these people don't have to actually do the practical they could do the timing or something um, and you need to make sure you have good rests in between it so I'm afraid that was a rather doom and gloom video, but risk assessment is a really important part of staying safe in a lab.